I'm using I am using the uh, mile lift. And I don't know if anyone on today even uses the mile lift, but I am using I it. Have it. And I'm using, we've updated the connections in the lift and I'm gonna do a little video. Now they connect right in. So with the mile lift and some of um, their technologies, their conduction is very, very sensitive. And having the um, electrodes directly in and not having, I don't have my little balls that I took out. Um, the balls, it did create, I feel, a more solid conduction. So if anyone has a mile lift, you know, talk to me later, or email me. Um, I'm gonna start out on educate because I need the muscle, kind of the minute muscle contraction to start with the limp. So, it's going to kind of wake up the skin. I love when we work um, with gloves because we just get the this whole canvas. When you work with gloves, everything is conductive. It does disperse the current more, but it is a great way when you're working on clients to really cover a vast oh, amount doing of gloves. the territory. Yeah, we're just gonna kind of just going over. And I want you to use your own intuition. Most of you on here have done microcurrent with me for quite a while. So I don't feel like I need to guide you on how to kind of clear everything. <clears throat> just kind of going over and brushing. I like to use, a, probably I'm using about a two, just kind of moving kind of creating a little bit of redness, microcirculation. Going over. And then just because, like I said, it's sinus season, allergies, it's gonna kind of now just kind of brush, just kind of anchoring. You can even anchor in this pressure point, kind of there's a pressure point right under there. And if you've got sinuses, like you're gonna feel this just drain. This is a great one for clients that come in, they're either hungover, or have allergies. And then just go ahead and just go over that whole apicularis oculi. Opening up. Beauty about microcurrent is we come up with these detailed um, ways to work it. But microcurrent works whether you just start at the eyes or you start at the neck. It's always going to be admitting a millionth of an amp. And that's what really helps with the cellular metabolism. Earlier, Maggie asked a question about LED and you know the oxidative stress. Well, even in microcurrent, we're gonna have a certain amount of oxidative stress. And again, it's just the catalyst for the body to initiate you know, more of the healing. Going over and now let's go to the forehead, just coming out going up and out. And now let's go ahead, get ready to do some releasing on the neck area. So right now I'm just gonna kind of go around and this is more of the exploratory time. I'm just gonna start. We're not, because we're working on ourselves, we get the benefit of feel. So we can feel tension. We can feel where something needs a little bit more time and hesitation. As we start to kind of feel in this area, I want you to just to kind of spend time where intuitively you feel there's a little bit of resistance. And how to, to gauge that is first, when you run your hand over a certain area, does it, is it tender? Does it hurt? You know, is it tight? So as you're kind of just going in and you're just 
kind of just brushing the fingers over that tissue, over that muscle, the level two. Kind of feel where, does it feel sore? Does it feel good? Do your fingers intuitively wanna linger there? There's no right or wrong when you're working microcurrent. You can always work microcurrent a little bit differently and hit another little spot. You know, in our profession being mainly estheticians, we're hovered over people. We have such strong cervical vertebrae and trap muscles because we're always hovered over and our heads are nearly 14 pounds. So the neck area is always one. You know, anyone that works at their computer, you should always be spending a nice amount of time on that neck. You're just kind of lengthening. Thinking about that connective tissue from the very top of the stratum corneum all the way down. That's fascia. When you get to a certain area, play around with it. Does it feel good if you tilt your head? Does it feel good pressuring your trigger point? We release trigger points in the neck that really kind of activates the, um, is it the varcus nerve or the, the nerve of relaxation, vagus nerve? Kind of spend in that time. And once you've kind of figured out the tension in there, let's go back to the cervical vertebrae, a hand on each side of the vertebrae and really start to kind of dig into that area. Feel, feel the vertebrae stacking on one another. Can you manipulate the fingers just to kind of loosen some of that fascia, the tendons, everything holding that in line? Is it tender? Move up to the occipital. She started massaging in there, the very top, the atlas. Start to kind of figure out. All we're doing is we're sending healing current in there right now. We get so fixated on microcurrent toning and lifting the muscles. And I had to tell you, I am gonna do a challenge soon because I found I look much better when I really do the microcurrent three days a week. And I don't do it unless I'm teaching. So <laughs> I'm gonna hold a microcurrent challenge coming up and that we, we do it and look amazing for springtime. We're going back and forth, kneeling heads. Feel those vertebrae go in, sending all that hydrogen into that tissue. You know, as we get older, our tissue just gets dehydrated. It's dehydrated because we're older. It's dehydrated due to the lack of uh, microcirculation. So to be able to just go in and send electrons that we know hydrate the tissue. And once we have that cervical vertebrae a little bit more opened up, let's take, choose a side and let's kind of just take one hand above the other and just a nice stretch. Let's just hold that. I'm gonna go ahead and wet my gloves again. It's holding. So I like to just set the hands down on the skin and then pull it opposite directions. I'm moving the tissue along the muscle. I'm not really going in to move the muscle. So I'm really just holding in this area. And while I'm holding, I'm gonna move my top hand even up halfway as though I'm just gonna hit that whole platysma. Just feel that stretch for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Holding the top, finish it all the way up. And kind of behind the ear. Now coming kind of like four fingers in. We're going to just feel that resistance again. And anything you can do to maximize and really just kind of 
accentuate the stretch and release. And while you're doing this, release the neck muscles, release the jaw muscles, release the trapezius. Tie into all of those muscles, relaxing them as we're stretching the connective tissue over them. And slowly move the top hand up, fingers right underneath the cheekbone around the zygomatic we're holding. And for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Finishing all the way up, kind of into that scalp, behind the ear and down. Let's go to the other side, just kind of holding. Getting just a really nice stretch in there. And you may find that sometimes you feel like you're going to benefit using a little bit more pressure. Nothing's wrong with that. Each person you do, you're always gonna use a different tension, a different pressure. And on yourself, it's about really stretching that connective tissue. Now kind of coming up, moving that hand up and holding for 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bringing that hand all the way up into the temple area behind the ears and down, coming up about four fingers up. And again, when we lean our head back, we're really stretching kind of the hyoid muscles. There's like this, these muscles that go back. And then ultimately it connects into the occipital. So this really loosens up just the lymph and the tension in the neck area. And moving the hand up underneath the cheekbone and holding, hitting that whole platysma for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, coming up all the way. Now let's go right underneath that double chin area. It's just kind of holding and lifting. And it's really easy to get dense contracted fascia in this area. And when we get dense, dehydrated, contracted fascia, not only just looks dull, but it holds on to just toxic lymph. Now I can't tell you the times that people come in and they don't want to peel. And when I really start looking at them, I can see all the lipofuscans you know, and the cellular metabolism just kind of dwelling in the skin. And that's what's giving it that sallow, dull appearance. And microcurrent is amazing for removing the lipofuscans. I mean, it is just clears all of that away. And bringing it up to the chin. Now kind of work in that chin area, all the tension we carry. For five, four, three, two, one. Choose one side, doesn't matter which one. Place the hand right underneath the jawline. So if you were measuring your neck. <clears throat> Now let's just kind of take these fingers, four fingers, and let's just kind of create space in this area. So I like to pull down and lift up. 
what we're doing is we're just kind of creating slight little, you know, movement in any fascial adhesions along the jawline. And that can happen even though we don't feel it, our fingers aren't moving, we're still creating change. When you visualize fascia and just the tentacles and how they're just omnidirectional all over and just pulling this resistance, we're creating new attachments, new movements, new fluid, new connections. So we're just gonna hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now holding in the same thing, I just want you to tilt your head. There you go, pulling down with the bottom, and then resisting to the top. You might feel a little tension in the neck and hold. Breathing, relaxing that neck area, releasing those muscles. Do you notice when you release the muscles, you tend to get more engagement of the fascia. And now if your top hand just starts moving, let it. Let it travel up the side of the face. Don't push it. Just let the hand glide and move organically. And going up. You can tilt your head if it helps to bring your chin down. Play around with the location. Just working with the tissue. Going all the way up, even into the temple area. As your fingers move, release the tension in that muscle. Release the tension in the muscles. Just let the tissue glide over. Releasing the cocooning of habitual facial movements. The resetting. And it feels like a spot you should linger. Let your fingers linger. And for five, four, three, two, one. And let's go to the other side. And I'm anchoring right underneath that jawbone, starting at the base of the jaw. And just creating a little bit of space. Just always, whenever we work with fascia, we think of space. We think of release. The more we can disengage the muscles and let the tissue, you start to feel the tissue moving. Just letting the fingers have their own journey. As the fascia starts to release and you have more space, go ahead and tilt your head. Letting things just organically release and move. Microcurrent does so many things. The longer the current just sits on the skin, the more it can do, feeding the tissues hydrogen. That hydrogen stays active in the system, constantly balancing and energizing. Keep going up. Feeling the release. Feeling the stretch. Relaxing the jaw, the neck. The tiny little muscles and the temples.
We move up towards the eyes. And we find you tilt your head more. If you need to adjust your bottom hand to find more, more of a stretch, you may find coming up to the jaw as you go up here. So we're thinking about lengthening everything that gets contracted over time. Lengthening and releasing. And for five, four, three, two, last one. Um, have my time. Get my hands wet again. And we're going to kind of come to the, the jawline. And I do a lot of that jawline because when you think we release the neck, you have your platysma from about two or three underneath, four fingers underneath your collarbone. The platysma runs all the way up. So think about when somebody gets a neck lift, right? They're pulling all of this up and back. And that lifts that whole lower face. So whenever you're really looking to lift a lower face, a lot of this is done in the neck area. It's just not here. There's just not a muscle to tight here, tighten here. We go around here many times to release lymph, but you've got the neck muscles responsible for lifting. So that's why I always insist that we lift and release because that gets pulled down. The next areas I like to separate, and I'm sorry, Stella's apparently talking to somebody, if you can hear her in the background. I like to release the mid face because I feel like now we've got the tightening of our masseters and the masseter works in conjunction with the temporalis. And so this can get very, very tight and contracted. So I always like to just kind of spend some time lifting and separating. And again, we're not thinking in terms of muscle right now. We're thinking in terms of fascia. Fascia interweaves through the muscle. You have muscle orientation, such as the origins and inserts, right? And that's kind of like how the face moves. But fascia covers all of this. So fascia is restricted, even though you have muscle orientation of moving, fascia is always going to position the muscle in a certain area. So it's always better to go in and just lightly release your client of the fascial adhesions. Now, sometimes you're gonna see fascial adhesions as slight scarring or dynamic wrinkles. And so there's different ways to, to work with the fascia. This is a very general um, approach, but it's something that you can apply in your treatment room, you know, today, right now when you're done. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going in underneath that little cheek, cheekbone area. And there'll be times I'm in the car and I don't know about you, but I feel that the worst lighting is in that rear view mirror. When you're at the red light and you just look in the mirror and you're just like, oh man, that was really bad. So sometimes I'll just see, I have this hollowing under here. So I'll really go deep. Let's just try it so you can see what that feels like. I want you to hold and I want you to go deep along that abicularis bone, that, uh, that orbital rim. Really go in there and smooth that out because the sphincter muscle of the eye is always going to close kind of there at 360 degree. So this is just a nice way just to kind of relax those muscles that blend into the zygomatics. I'm using a pretty heavy pressure. Now let's kind of reverse the same idea, but we're going to anchor at the outside. And again, using like a, I'm going pretty deep. I want to feel that muscle melt underneath my fingers. And the 
the more dehydrated that muscle, the harder it is. So when you remember back in kindergarten, when they throw that big like brick of clay and you were just supposed to make a snowman or something. And you're thinking, I, I can't even like, like mold this, but the more that the clay is in the hand, it would soften. And that's kind of what the fat, the muscle does when you really start to work it at this level three, you're just softening and kind of hydrating that muscle. Now we're gonna just take this and open it up. Feel all the tension. I just love how it starts to relax release and let's go ahead and do the other side now kind of anchoring and i'm really going deep so I want you just to kind of let me know how you're feeling going deep <clears throat> i don't want you to be you know actually you all are i'm looking at the 90 percent professionals so we're not stretching skin. So don't, you know, come back on me and be like, oh, you're stretching all the skin. You know, you're getting a certain amount, but you're really working on like smoothing the muscle around the eye and now kind of coming up. So you shouldn't feel like an extreme amount of strain. Okay, I'm gonna read a comment. I always love comments. Thank you. Um, yeah, it does feel like it's like a decompression. You just feel this melting underneath and it's just a way of just saying to that muscle, you know what, we're gonna redistribute, you know, the motor neurons. We're just really doing a deep massage. And now we're gonna to come to the corner of the eye we're just gonna open that. And again, you've got that pressure point. So it really kind of hurts sometimes to open up in this area. Yeah, so now let's go to the temple area. And the same thing, a level three, really deep in that area. Massaging all in there. And let's go to the other side. Opening. While you're doing this, feel what you're feeling. And we're going to talk a little bit about it when we're done, because I do want to finish up uh, in about um, 10 minutes. I want to talk, so while we're doing this, I want you to acknowledge what you're feeling when we work at these level threes. Katie, can you just close my door, please? Kind of opening all of this up. Recording. Now, this is something that, again, clients love. I want you just to take, we're going to do it two sides right now. Because uh, when, if you, when you take the class, um, we usually ground so you can work two sides at the same time. But I want you to take your fingers towards your ear and I want you to open your mouth. And you can feel the joint, right? So I want you to take your finger into the part that it's a little bit more of a pocket. And I want you to anchor <clears throat> underneath your chin. Now I just want you to drag your fingers along the zygomatic ridge. And this is the tiny little muscles underneath the cheekbone. Now you're gonna get to a point in the kind of mid face where it's very tender. There's a pressure point and a trigger point there. 
I want you, if it's super tender, to linger there. You're sending microcurrent energy. Coming all the way. All the way. All the way. I know, we all look funny. And relax. Let's do that again. So you're going to take back. We're going to strip all of that. So what we're doing is we're just nourishing those deep, deep muscles. We're coming forward all the way. Relax your jaw. Relax your eye muscles. It's funny how they, everything wants to get in and start compensating. Relax the temples. Feel that release when you relax the temples in the zygomatic. Coming forward. One last time, we're going to kind of come up now along the cheekbone. We're holding, and we're now we're not underneath the cheekbone, we're on top of the cheekbone. And we're doing the same thing. And we're going in the opposite direction that we normally go. And we're doing that because the origin is always pulling the face up. So we're just reversing the tension right now. All along that cheekbone. Nice. And one last time. Towards the nose, no, just kind of flush and release. So the reason I like to do that is we're constantly smiling, right? And so we get in this muscle habit of bunching in here. So when we can go in and kind of reverse, just like we were kind of doing the deep work around the eye, we have a real opportunity with the mid face because we've got these bones here. We can really get in and work that deep muscle in this area. So when you have someone with like a lot of facial tension, that's a great little one to do before you would go back and maybe plump or tighten. Um, if you've been with me a long time, you know I'm not a big fan on <laughs> plumping and tightening um, more than just an overall toning because I feel that the facial muscles are already just so worked all the time. So if you have a second, um, let's switch and put our probes into the lift and finish with a nice lift. Um, if not, follow along with your gloves. Um, I think I've just got, I am making the lift with smaller attachments, like a smaller attachment cord because um, it's like I'm rolling over it on my, in my cart or my stool at the clinic and it drives me crazy. So I have Tony making um, some cords just about six inches long that it just goes with your, your normal coat, <clears throat> your normal microcurrent cord. Um, you do have to use glide gel with the lift. Um, I know Ashley sent out um, wholesale um, notices to start carrying the lift. I've been on the fence about coming out with a unit. <clears throat> I have face plates for it, but um, I love that the lift is can go with any machine. So for retailing, I feel like to give you the best price to retail, and then you have a choice on what machine you want to sell your clients. Um, this is just a great tool though for your clients. All the clients that I have sold end up loving the lift because as much as they, they say they're gonna do microcurrent with me, they never do and they'll just use the lift. So the lift is easy. It's kind of um, just intuitive. 
So kind of holding and coming up, lifting right underneath that cheek. And I always like to kind of tweak it. The cool thing is um, you can always just use two because each electrode when it touches the skin gets activated. So the current's not going to go any further than where the points are. So you can, if you want a stronger, you can kind of hold it and then you can move it along the jaw. And these are just hitting all of these little pressure points. What we don't think about when we talk about pressure points is these pressure points are like little fiber optic communication systems throughout the whole body. So when you're working these areas, you're actually really doing something throughout the whole body. And that's kind of the beauty of microcurrent. Now, if you ever study um, microcurrent in acupuncture, you know, you can see that when you're working on somebody's face, you're actually working on their whole body at the same time. We don't go into it because, I mean, imagine the state of California with that information, you guys would just never be able to work on anybody again. Um, but the face is just like its own reflexology points, many, much like the feet. So when you're using microcurrent, you're actually resetting the whole, the whole system. Coming up. You know what, um, someone just asked if I changed my setting. I didn't. Um, usually, I, if I'm working on clients, I do change settings. On myself, I'll just go probably with one setting and then the next time I do microcurrent, I use another setting. So, kind of coming up underneath here. Just love how I can feel the, the current going in and out. Now let's just kind of cross hatch. Let's just kind of take this and kind of go to the side, holding. And coming back. Now coming to the center, and right over those areas. And coming out to the side. Do the other side, just kind of holding out. And moving to the side. You know, microcurrent is just the perfect Thing to do if you feel tired. I used to call it the ugly day facial. Like I would always know when it was time to do microcurrent because my skin just looked like it needed to be rejuvenated and you do microcurrent and you're just like, oh my gosh, there I am again. It's amazing what, that, what it does. Coming to the side. Now let's just kind of take the eye and kind of coming up. So like I said, I'm going to look real quick. <clears throat> um, if you go to Mighty Networks and you want to 
um, join that meeting. We'll see if it's the same. Might be the same link that we're on right now. 1531. No, it's not. So you'll have to go into Mighty Networks and join um, the special meeting with Darren. Let's go to the other side. Look at that, just lifted that up. Um, but it'll be an interesting, um, probably about 30 minutes, not, not too long. Just kind of what he's doing. He has started a group um, kind of just for people that are interested in um, more self-development and, and using it in the aesthetics and kind of the healing aspect of what we do in aesthetics. He does a lot with um, acupuncturist and more oral medicine, but it's always kind of fun just to explore you know, energy work because we work on so many people and what we do is a lot of energy work. Kind of coming up now. Better. It's done. So I'm going to turn off the recording and then um, just get your feedback on what you think about doing some of the deeper muscle work with the fingers. You guys can unmute un, um, if you like. Oh, it's Kimmy. I, I love that stuff. I think that is um, always when we start with that. I, I do feel like I get better results just overall when we start by doing some of that loosening first. And it, of course, it does. Yeah. I kind of feel that way too. Um, for me personally, and it's sometimes hard when you do incorporate this in with clients, um, it, you kind of have to blend it. A lot of times I work with my hands um, and then other days I'll just do the lift or I'll do other probes. So it feels because they can feel it more. But um, personally, I feel like you just, I can really get in there and release some of the stuff. And a lot of people do like the deep massage. So you guys will have to, to try it and see what you think. Hey, Barbara. Hi, um, the deep work, actually you could feel it in the cells. And I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Really nice. Like you really feel the cells like. You do. Yeah. And you do feel that instant hydration of the muscle. And yes. kind of like the tone of it. I wish there was more research on that, but not, not yet. <laughs> and you feel the pain. Where yes. you're... <laughs> yeah, you do. You feel the, the trigger points. You feel yeah. the adhesions and all of that. Especially with the bite, if there's any difference with your oh, yeah. big time. I know. Um, any other questions, guys, or anything? This is Carolyn. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, so I am not a professional, and I have uh, the Myolift, and I do have your Anma. And um, my question was, did um, because of that, I don't have a level three, but you stayed in level two educate this whole time. Is that correct? Okay, no. So here's the thing. Um, when I talk about levels, Carolyn, I'm talking about levels of touch. So go ahead and just touch your skin and kind of brush crumbs off your chin. That would okay. be like a level one, okay? Yes. Now a level two is moving the skin along the muscle. Okay, there you go. Level three, we're digging into that muscle. Okay, okay, gotcha. So whenever I talk about that, that will okay. be what I'm referring to. And then were, were you an educate this whole time? Yes, I used educate this whole time. So when, when we have machines and levels and names, 
really what that's saying is the level, the depth of the current going. So educate is made a waveform made to communicate with the muscle. So I started in educate on the mile lift because I was kind of congested and I've got <clears throat> a lot <laughs> like just stuck. So the only way the lymphatic system works is by engaging the muscles gotcha. in the face. So that's why I chose that. Um, but there are different ways that I can manipulate that waveform. Like we could do a pinching and a toning, but this time I did it more as a stretching and I wanted the current to go to that area. Now, when you would use erase, erase is more superficial. So let's just say that you were feeling like you just wanted some plumping around the eyes. You could use a race in that area and literally to like take your finger like you were an eraser in like a program and kind of plump up the, that tissue in that area. And you can do that in the nasal labial, around the lip lines and the chin. Do you know that your eyes look so plumped up today? Oh God, well, thank you. I think I'm just swollen because I'm like have sinuses. It looks great, <laughs> whatever. And, and thank God for lights and filters because it's not this pretty on the side. I'm just going to tell you. Your skin is amazing. <laughs> I know. You look fabulous all the time. Well, thank you. Hey, I got to jump off and fix my hair to get back on with Darren. But I will see you guys next week. I really appreciate you guys. Yeah. Wait, so how do I get to Darren? What? Thanks, Jane. How do I get to Darren? I go on, on Facebook right now? No, Mighty Networks. I'm Mighty Under Networks. Jane, okay. are, are we at nine o'clock your time again next week then? So how does that work out for everybody? Do you, is it my work? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I personally love 830 better because I see I have I've scheduled this around all my clients, but next that yeah, but we if we get the recordings, then that's yeah, that's all cool. So okay, and then we'll figure it out. I just know she advertised this one for some reason. It, it she knew she do it too late. She's like, oh no. So we'll try it again and then we'll, if it's not, then we can always switch to 830. Okay. Thank you okay. so much, Jane. Thank, Thank you very everyone. much. See you. Thank you. Bye. Five minutes. It's five minutes, right? Five minutes.